Ramón Cordova Rivera. Is the name of when I was born. Is the name of the saint for the day. So San Ramón, they gave me that name. It was a house in the barrio where I was born. There were no hospitals at that time, so I was born in the house in Colombo Park. Uh, no electricity, no wa no water inside the house, no gas, and uh, we had a shower in the back, in the backyard, at the cold water. So we took a shower once a once a week, Saturday. We had the little, little um, rooms in the back of the house, you know, small rooms. That's where I used to stay with my brother. And I lost a sister when she was still stillborn. And that's all we had. But my brother was always uh, reading. He never played with us, but he would uh, be in the house reading, you know. To get a loaf of bread and cut it in half and take the inside out of it and fill it with frijoles and uh, sit down and, and listen to the radio. With no TVs then, we were, we were poor, you know, so there was no toys around. You know? We made out little wagons you know, to play with them. and we, we, we made uh, skateboards just to take the skates and the man underneath a big uh, two by four and there was a skateboard. <laughs> my mother was born in Sonora, Mexico. My dad was born in Zacatecas and they, they came to the, to the U.S. when they were very young. I don't recall too much of my mother because uh, I was five years old when she died. My dad was a uh, Sports minded, minded guy, you know. He, he never played baseball, but he was a manager. And he was a hard working man. He uh, worked in construction. He was very joyful, you know, playful. You know, to play around with his compadres. You know. yes. Well, we, we never grew up with my dad, you know. We, he left, when my mother died, he left and went to Los Angeles. We, at that time, Los Angeles from Canoga Park was an all-day journey then. So he, he moved to uh, Los Angeles and left us with our, a lady that took care of him when he was young. And, and so she took care of us, named Mama Petra. And she was a lady that raised me. So what I am now, I owe it to her. There is his name was Lucio Cruz and she was Petra Cruz. No relation to us, but they raised us, my brother, myself, and an uncle. Very loving uh, couple. Yeah. 7036 Deering Avenue. She was a housewife, and he had a little grocery store uh, in there in Canoga. And that's where we grew up in the grocery store. My grandfather was Octaviano Rivera. I never met my grandmother. My grandfather is from Zacatecas also, you know. My grandmother, I don't know where she was born. My grandpa, ah, remember that uh, he used to be a hustler, you know. Any place uh, there was something to, to pick up, he would pick up, you know, bring home. In fact, the memories I have of him in, uh, when in Chatsworth, when he used to plant watermelon at the end of the season they would leave the watermelons in the field and anybody could go in and get them so we went to pick up some watermelons and he got a watermelon cut it in half and took a bite out of it and it was uh, sour so he spit it out and when we got home you remember that he well, didn't have his dentures <laughs> So uh, he said, where are my dentures? And I said, you probably spit them out on the field. You know? Oh my God. We went back and there they were, you know. <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of dogs, you know. One was, uh, he was a, we used to call him Teepee, you know, and he was a spoiled brat, bringing back memories of Mason now. Mason? <laughs> <laughs> 
Grammar school, I went to Eaton Avenue School from kinder to eighth grade. Went to Canoga High from nine to twelfth grade. I dressed in khaki pants then, white shirts, and my letter was So that's a big deal then. <laughs> Did you ever get into any trouble? No, never. <laughs> You said you were going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> what no, happened? The only, the only, I didn't get into trouble, but one Sunday morning, we, when my friend and I, I had a Model A Ford, and we were going downtown, Canoga there, and uh, there was a girl that got raped. Uh, from the outskirts of Canoga. From the outskirts of Canoga was then on and Canoga Avenue. And she got picked up at a bar and the Mexican guys raped her. And so they picked up all the Mexicans that day, that Sunday morning, and that was one of them. That they picked up me and my, my friend and they took us to jail which was at Van Nuys, that it was the only jail in the valley. And so we stayed three days in jail and they let us out. And after they let us out, we had to go play basketball at school. You know. But uh, we were never convicted, it was just an arrest. And the ones that were convicted, they spent many years in jail. And that, that, wow. I think that's the only trouble I, I got into, you know. I never drank, you know, I never drank, I didn't know I ever smoked until I was about oh, 17, 18 years old, probably, well, probably 19 years old, I did my first beer. And now the, my grandkids don't take after me. <laughs> well, I knew her family, actually, because uh, in Canoga everybody knew each other, you know. So I knew the Juarez family in Canoga, but I, I probably didn't, I probably saw her, but I never knew, knew her, you know, so until she got me hooked. Because <laughs> one day, the, one day she dropped her boost to her. <laughs> Or books, books. <laughs> she dropped her books in the river, the Los Angeles River, which was. What? And so she, uh, her friend told me to go, go get him, so that's when I met her, you know. And she invited me to a dance, so. Wait, explain the book situation, what happened? Well, yeah. They dropped him down on purpose <laughs> so that I could go down there to get him, you know. She wanted to, <clears throat> to invite me to a dance. It used to call a vice versa dance where the girls invited the boys oh, okay. to dance. You know, so that's when I first met her. And 63 years later, we're still here. So She's I thought that, uh, that her family had a lot of money. It was like the father's family had a lot of money in Canoga there. So I said, oh, I'll marry her and I'll be <laughs> set for the rest of my life, you know. We got engaged, uh, gave her the ring where we were at the drive-in theater. There was a receipt I had a drive-in theater. So we went to the theater and I bought some popcorn and put the ring in the popcorn. Oh, that's cute. And when I gave her the popcorn, she didn't want to eat it. I said, eat the popcorn, you know? And then she got down to where the ring was and there's where it was, you know? I had to get my parents' permission to okay. sign, yeah. Where did you get married? In Yuma, Arizona. Well, she's always been supportive. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, I think that uh, what I do, I mean, you know, that we do it together, you know, it's, it's a lot better you know, than doing it yourself. You know, and get her opinion, you know, so. The first one, I think uh, we named him after my mother, Rita. And the second one, Marie, I think that 
for my wife, Marie. And the third one, Raymond, was the other of me, I guess. And I don't remember what we named Gloria after. I just picked the name, you know. And Yvette, I guess just, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> <laughs> We had Rita that um, we used to grab dresser and coveralls, you know, and everybody thought she was a boy. <laughs> she had curly, curly hair. Well, Marie is a, a sergeant now, you know. But she, she gets everybody to do what they don't want to do, you know. Gloria? Gloria, the house, why? Make her, you know, because she doesn't cook, but she cleans the house, you know. She's <laughs> Yvette. The gambler. The gambler? <laughs> <laughs> Raymond? Raymond was the Medici, you know. Was, <laughs> he, everybody in, the, in, in Canoga used to know Raymond. I think they still do. I think that every day is a celebration with the kids, the grandkids, because you know, we always see them, you know, every day we see the grandkids, kids. And celebrations, I mean, it's, they're always a full house when they celebrate, you know, and everybody's still together, which I wish they would be, we're gone, you know, that they will keep the family traditions being together. You know. The best part is that they, you know, they, they all came out good. They didn't have no, never gave us any trouble. None of them. It's like Raymond didn't, didn't give us any trouble in being a boy. So all of them have, you're real proud of them. You know, they, they, they are what they are now. You know. Never, it's not going to happen, you know, but uh, being that uh, my grandkids will really take that spouse, you know, that they get married, you know. And that's my biggest wish, you know, that they would get married. You know, and, but it's, it's hard, you know, nowadays, you know. It's like a different game now than what it used to be. You know. But I leave it all in God's hand, you know, whatever it is. I was I was born a Catholic, baptized in the Catholic Church, and when my mother died when I was five years old, the lady that raised me she converted to the Four Square Church. So I was brought up in the Four Square Church, and until I got to the age of seventeen, then I quit going to church there. And then I got married, and we had our children, and we had them in, in uh, First Communion and CCD program. And going to church on Sunday and not being able to go to Communion, so that hurt me a lot of times, you know. So then I went to Mary's Encounter, and then to Corsillo, and after that, they asked me to become a deacon. I said, I wouldn't do it. I said, it's not up to me. So here I am, 33 years later, serving the Lord as a deacon. So that's why I converted back into the Catholic Church. I think uh, serving the people, you know, getting the satisfaction of being there when the people need you, especially in a funeral. You know, it's not what I say, but my presence there is what makes the people a lot of time uh, happier, you know. And it's, so this, in certain baptizing babies also, that's a big 
you make them fancy, you know, where nowadays I can go down the street and they tell me, Deacon, you baptized me. Mm -hmm. And so now that I've seen, I've I baptized babies, I've seen them go to the First Communion, Confirmation, come back and get married, and now they bring me their <laughs> babies to baptize. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to completely circle now around. And nowadays, you know, I'm just waiting to be called, not myself, you know. And the Lord calls me, you know, be ready to say, yes, Lord, here I am, take me. And I remember you know, what their grandpa was, you know. I mean, good times and bad, you know, it's uh, the grandpa was not a perfect man, you know, when we had our faults, you know. I remember that I was here to help him, that's all I know. Whatever they think of me, that I that hope that I've set an example for them. If you could write a message to each of your children and grandchildren and put it in a time capsule for them to read 20 years from now, what would you write? Be a seeker. <laughs> I just say, you know, that uh, I left them an example, you know, to follow, you know, and that uh, raise your kids the way we raise them, the grandkids also, and, and uh, I live. I hope I left good memories when I'm gone. So, and I'll wait for them. Whenever uh, they're ready to go, I'll be waiting for them. I dance. <laughs> And he stuck to me like Velcro. <laughs> he said you got him hooked. The girls dropped the book. I didn't. <laughs> they were determined that I was at a meeting. I couldn't stand him. I couldn't Still? ask him. Did I, could I stand you? No. After a day. Huh? <laughs> After a day. No, not even then. What's the best thing about being a grandparent? The best thing is that you know, I'm happy when I see them, I'm happier when they leave. 